I am of the opinion that if Africa as a continent wants to break the cycle of integration and perpetual destitution, we must first possess ownership of our land and resources in every sense of the word ownership. Because when you don't have the right to your land, it could be disastrous and excessively exploited. The fight to get rid of the exploitation and excessive violation and degradation of Niger Delta land was fought by the Ogoni people and the Niger Delta people. And today we'll be looking at their story and this whole struggle from the perspective of both eyes and what we as Africans need to learn from them. This is the story of the Niger Delta people and their struggle from the shackles of new colonialist oil corporation and their fellow Nigerian government. A.K.A. Pure World, A.K.A. One in Seven Bill, A.K.A. Watermelon Gang, and today we'll be looking at the environmental degradation of the Niger Delta area and their exploitation by new colonialist oil conglomerates, and how we as African lost the fight and are the whole debacle. And today we'll be paying more attention into or using Ogoni land as a case study in the whole tobacco and the whole exploitation of um of the whole ninja delta using ogoni as a case study so i will try as much as possible like i always say every time in my videos try as much as possible to be unbiased and look at it from both perspectives so let's get right into it and please and please i beg before i, before I start please try subscribe like this video share whatever like i'm starting this channel so please i beg like subscribe try David Thin and let's get right to it. Nigeria is African largest oil producer and ever since oil was struck at Oluburi, the Niger Delta area of Nigeria, on Sunday 15 January 1956, after 50 years of unsuccessful oil exploration by various oil companies, I could arguably say that it have been more of a cause than a blessing. And I say this because the Niger Delta region of Africa is arguably the most environmental degraded place in the world, mostly due to oil spill, gas flaring from well-known international oil conglomerates like the Royal Dutch Company, Chevron, ExxonMobil, Total, BP, Conoy and the rest, and the corporate negligence of the federal government of Nigeria and in their inaction to solve the problem. According to an Amnesty International publication on how they could have helped us prove how a close Shell and NER. It is stated that Shell reported that about 17.5 million liter of oil was spilled in the Niger Delta alone in 2011. This is about the size of seven Olympic swimming pools. These are a huge number, but in reality, it's 10 times worse than the actual figure given by these conglomerates. The Nigerian government recorded that about 13 1,369 spills from, was recorded by Shell and 1,659 spills was recorded by any within the same time frame. Like I said earlier before, this, vol this volume of spills are actually inaccurate and based on research done by Amnesty, it is reported that the company underestimated the real actual amount of the spill. In Niger Delta within that same time frame. And he said the leak was caused by a criminal entity and theft. And they say this because they don't want to accept responsibility for their action. Blaming spills on theft means that the company don't have to pay for compensation. And this is actually very bad. I think where we have to retrace our step and understand the whole situation. We, we 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 even asking for compensation. That's the Niger Delta people asking for compensation. For Africans asking for compensation for their land. It's kind of really it's really it's really chicken change. Let me explain. 
Bodo community in 2008 to 2009, I think, filed a lawsuit to to an international court aided by the Amnesty International, and for some reason they won. They won about like 55 million dollars, and for some reason, according to the research I did, they kind of spent the money. Some may have might have gotten the money, some didn't. But they spent, they shared the money within themselves, and they got about like one one million each, one million naira each from each fam from each family or each person. I, I don't really know, but things didn't. Um, they, 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 their land wasn't restored, like like the whole Ogoni land wasn't restored. Bodo is just a community, and for some reason, it's it's really annoying and really painful because you can't. It doesn't change it doesn't bring you collecting one million one million naira each from a company it doesn't change the status quo of what is really happening i don't really know if it makes sense in the sense that using king to river family as example that won about 15 million um, us dollars from the court as a compensation for their father's debt you 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 collected 15 million dollar right but you ended up still coming back to Goni land that is see um um that is see actually big with oil spills and very degraded degraded it doesn't really make sense for me because it, it you, they didn't even accept that okay they're actually doing this because they said according to shell they, they said we are doing this as based on compensation not going to the fact that we had hand in your father's death so it really it's really we we actually going back instead of going forward in the fight so like we have to understand that because the composition can't really solve the matter the, the you, you you need your land needs to be restored before being compensated that's when you're going to be fully compensated is when your land is restored and you're enjoying your land and you're enjoying the money from the resources of your land that's all i can say for the sake of the length of this video, I will use Ugoni land as a case study to portray more points. According to most environmental activists, Ugoni land is the most environmentally degraded place in Africa, arguably the world. Ugoni is culturally divided into three parts, which are the Nkana, the Gokana, the Eleme, and there are about 124 villages in Ugoni land, Bowie acting as their capital. Ogoni land was a very peaceful and environmental friendly area of Niger Delta. Known for its aquaculture and fisherman lifestyle. But everything changed in 1958 when the Royal Dutch companies and other companies discovered oil in Ogoni land. Record shows that Shell have about 100 or over 100 wells in Ogoni land. The funny part is that they say that 70% of the oil spills from their facility occurs as a result of theft rather than human error on their part. And this is just very, 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 very pitiful. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there is no oil bank or oil theft in Ogoni land. I'm just saying that the actual number of theft is being inflated or overestimated by these oil companies in order not to pay compensation. And besides, if the the oil company didn't or didn't exploit the land to the extent that there is spills and um, the environment is just too polluted. The locals won't turn to bunkering and theft. And that's just the true fact. I'm just keeping it real with you guys. That's just the true fact. But what they do is overestimate the actual value of the theft, thereby making it easy for them not to pay compensation. Amnesty estimate that it will take the Niger Delta about 30 years to be restored to its environmental glory, if I could use that word. But, and it will also take about 30 billion US dollars to clean the whole Niger Delta up. And that's a very, very small fraction to the actual money that have been taken from the land. Because Shell alone estimate about 15 billion in gross profit yearly or more than that and still it can't even provide one percent for cleanup and restoration and remediation and like i always say that's just pitiful because the evidence shows clearly that this place have been exploited degraded polluted and 
killed to the brim of extinction to the extent that there is no life or wildlife form in Niger Delta area anymore. Like we even need to do more as a people, even the government, but the government turned the other way based on bribery, corruption, scandals and the rest. Like it's just really painful and annoying. So how do we as Africans come in play in this discussion? Well, as far as I'm concerned, I always say this and I always keep on saying it. The African society or the African government is a reflection of the African society. The government is not an alien government. The government are its people. So if you say the government is corrupt, you're actually saying that Africans are corrupt. But that being said, there are certain people or the f there are certain people that fought against this whole exploitation. We use an example as the Ogoni Nine, headed by Ken Sagowiwa, the late Ken Sagowiwa, who was who the oil company alleged allegedly had a hand in his death. And that was like the kind of the, the height of the bromance between the Babandigida regime and the Abacha regime alongside the oil conglomerates and their alleged hands in killing Kensa Uriwa and the Uguni Nine. Because there were three things Uguni, Uguni Nine and the Kensa Uriwa fought for. Number one, they fought for autonomy, they fought for fair share and they fought for the remediation of the Uguni land. But as we have it right now, they're all dead and like Ken Sarura said, the struggle still continues and the struggle still continues. Most of the, the number of people that have oil wells in the Niger Delta, I don't think they are even up to 10 compared to the number of people that have oil wells in the north in their own land. It's really painful as a result of bribe and lobby from the military regime and it's evident you could go check it up like most of our military head of state were compensated with an oil well and most of them are Fulani and Northerners. It's like it's really it's really painful. But what the oil company tried to portray and put them uh, paint themselves in the back is that they actually give scholarship and they give job and they send people abroad. What's the need to send someone abroad if once the person is done abroad can't even come back to his own land and sleep without inhaling gas from gas flaring and can't even drink a good table water like it's really painful and from 1956 till now to this very moment the total amount spent in scholarship is not even close to 50 million dollars and that's just the fact you could go check it up it's really painful and it just reflects how the society is and what we are going going through as a society and as Africa. The exploitation is really, really, really bad. And the moment we understand this, the moment we try to move forward. So finally, I would end by saying, why does it have to take the Ken Sorura family about, or, or let me rephrase, why does it have to take um, Shell and a lawsuit from the Ken Sorura family. The lawsuit, I think, lasted about like 15 years or so for them to acknowledge that, okay, see what they did. And in real sense, they didn't even acknowledge. They settled it out of court with, with the sum of, I think, $15.5 million and gave the um, Ken Sorura family. And I feel that's just a pinch to the actual pain and compared to the actual pain and suffering of this people in Ogoni land because they are, they, they, this this land is just so degraded and it's really painful like if you go there the oil spill and most times like I said in the, in, the, in the video earlier they blame it on oil bunkering meanwhile or, or, or oil spills from from locals and which is actually wrong because they, they overestimate or underestimate the, the actual uh, estimate of the spill so I feel that the government should have a lot to play in this. It does. It, 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 they have to do something about it. But like I said, we already lost the fight because even the government are actually in bed with the oil conglomerate, and the oil conglomerate are in bed with the um, government, the Nigerian government. It didn't. It, you don't even have to have a president or South South 
um, origin for it to stop because it's already ingrained or entrenched if i could use that word in the in the uh, in the upper carcass way be way above my pay grade or way above a youtuber like me but i'm just trying to shed more light on this so everybody will understand what is actually going on that this uh, you even giving the, the them 15 million to come back to the land that is actually spoiled or that that have actually been degraded like i always i don't know i always use that but, but but it's really annoying at the same time the ceo of the company then brian anderson i'm sure 15.5 million is ticking change to him so it's it's really painful i don't know like it's really demonic and really painful but that's like i'm out i'm really out man but once again, I really thank you for everything. I thank you for sticking to, with me to the end of the video. And I appreciate it. I thank you. I love you. Please, like I always say, like, share, subscribe. And I see you, see you in the next video.